Here are four more answers to great study tip questions. This is a question I was asked recently. How do you revise something when you just can't be bothered? I think that's actually a really good question. I think it comes from the idea that sometimes you feel really into your study and you feel really happy and really energetic and really focused around doing that study and it feels great. But other times you just can't be bothered. And when you're in that feeling, it's really hard to force yourself to get into that really good feeling. And I think you have to understand yourself as a learner. You have to understand yourself as a, as a person, really, that you aren't always in that frame of mind. Now, psychology would say there are kind of three frames of mind. There's your really creative, happy, energetic, loads of energy, loads of creative output, really exciting. That's a real buzzing time when you're in that kind of state of mind, that really focused attention. And that's great, but you probably only have a couple of hours of that attention a day. Most of the time, you'll probably be in a kind of engage and get lots of work done, but you're not really creative and it doesn't feel great, but you know, you can plow on for a long time. You get a lot churned out. You're really productive during that middle time. But sometimes you're in that really lazy frame of mind and it's important not to try and force it. But sometimes when you just make a start, you do work yourself up that engagement and you feel really happy and engaged in the end. So I would have a type of revision that you do when you can't be bothered, whether that is just sorting through your flashcards, whether it's just look, cover and check that you actually get something. It's all that memory work, is a really good type of revision to do when you can't be bothered. So do that recall quizzing when you can't be bothered and at least you'll be satisfied that you haven't just wasted your time. Here's a question a student asked me recently. How do I study for a subject that I'm not that interested in? Well, you probably guessed they were asking me because it was about physics and I really wanted to ask their physics teacher what they were getting wrong that meant that they weren't interested in physics. I've got two pictures here, one of uh, the Eagle Nebula where stars are born, one, one of the places, one of the nebula that stars are born in and this one which is a picture of an oxygen atom being blown apart into smithereens, all the different subatomic particles in an oxygen. They're amazing pictures because physics tackles the biggest things and the smallest things and explains everything in between. So if you're not that fascinated by physics, probably you haven't been taught it all that well. So well, I'm gonna get my kids popping up in the comments saying, yeah, I don't like physics much either, sir. <laughs> but you know, you may have to accept that you can't be fascinated by everything. And everything isn't everybody's cup of tea. Everything isn't the biggest priority for everyone. And so you might have to just make physics the right size for you or whatever subject is that you can't be bothered in. But put it this way, if you get all these grade, let's say you get all these grade sevens and you get this one grade five and you know you didn't put enough effort into that because you weren't that interested, well, how's that gonna make you feel? I can tell you because I've got a B in German in GCSE and I can tell you that my 16 year old self probably would have pretended he wasn't that bothered. But now if I have to write out my GCSEs and all the A's and that one B oh, and I know I didn't maybe put all that effort into that because I wasn't that interested. That's not a good place to be. So work out what it is that you want to get with that subject that you're not that interested in and just put in enough work to mean that you get that and you're satisfied with that grade. That's my advice anyway. Make it right size. Don't make a big deal out of it, but do enough so that you can be satisfied you haven't let yourself down. So what's that revision tip that I wish someone had told me earlier? Well, you know, when I was uh, 16, 17, 18, the whole study tube obviously didn't really exist. And I do wish that I'd had any and all of the study tips that people put out there for you guys now. The one that I think I've just come across in the last few years has been space repetition, space revision. Just the idea that give it some time and you can bring your understanding back up to that 100% mark after maybe two weeks. After these gaps, you just come back to it and bring your knowledge and understanding back up to that level. Not thinking that you're going to study an entire chunk and then never see it again and you'll just remember it. But you've got to keep revisiting it because it doesn't take much effort to bring your understanding back up to 100%. And for me, when I was a kid, like I thought that there was no hope for me doing my revision if I didn't make a revision timetable, but I couldn't be doing with that. And I didn't make a revision timetable. But if someone had said to me, no, it's not that important about scheduling in which days of the week you do which subject. It's more important to just be leaving and coming back and making sure you're hitting all of your different subjects at regular intervals and all the topics within those subjects at regular intervals. And I think the tip of using a spreadsheet or some journal to keep track of when you do each subject and each topic within that and how you felt about it at that time. And so that you do go back to them, you realize, oh, I haven't studied that for a few weeks now. I better go back on that because I wasn't that sure about that at the time. That spaced repetition, leaving those intervals and checking in with yourself and making sure you do go back and revisit them is a really powerful revision technique indeed. 
This is a question I get asked all the time. What's the most efficient way to revise science? Well, efficiency, of course, is just the ratio of useful energy transfer to total energy transfer. So it's not that, but what is the most time effective way to do that? That is really the question that was on everyone's lips when it comes to revision. What can I get the best grade output out of the least time input in? And the answer is self-quizzing. Check out my video here, the top five and bottom five revision techniques, and make sure you do all the top five and none of the bottom five, and you will get the most out of your study time. And certainly don't waste your time just copying out or making notes out of a textbook or revision guide. It really doesn't help. And it's long. You have to take a long, long time to learn anything that way. But don't forget that recall practice alone will not give you the skills to do the very, very hardest questions. So you need to make sure you're also doing lots of exam practice. Those two things, recall practice, exam practice, that's the way to revise.